Um, I'm gonna. I I I drew my uh, I drew my review. So here we go. Like hieroglyphics. No. no uh, so here we go. So ah. they, um, I drew a question mark in the shape. Ah, of, uh, you watched. Okay. Could you the pronounce that word CD. in the background? Nice. No, so that, that's that's not a that's not a word. That's a noise um, to symbolise Hans Zimmer's uh, Hans Zimmer's amazing score. No, it's it was it's this noise that the it's like I, I don't know because I've not watched any making of shit, but it's like a noise that Hans Zimmer has in in throughout the June two score. It's like <laughs> something like that. <laughs> um, I've uh, I've drawn the sandworm in the shape of a question mark to symbolise the fact that. When I was having coffee afterwards, I had to ask about 100 questions to get my head around what was going on. I've done okay. a... Is that a glass of water in the corner? No, it's a glass of a uh, worm piss, which, uh, believe it or not, is a key plot point in uh, Engine 2. <laughs> oh, well, okay. I thought you'd and, draw Zendaya. Uh, uh, I didn't draw Zendaya because um, she was too pretty. Uh, and uh, I did... That's There's wee Timothy Chamelay, though. Um, a big tub of spice. We can have a big tub of spice. Which has, a di- which has different connotations in Scotland, but that's fine. Um, um, so he's a you know a wee spice boy, and then you've got a uh, you and then I drew this halo to symbolise the religious themes that uh, that feature throughout June too. And then obviously oh, the, that's lots. Did of the big worm go to heaven? The big worm did not go to heaven. Um, is either that or is the Sonic the Hedgehog ring that's about to collect? Well, ding. yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, I went to see uh, I went to see June two yesterday and. Um, I enjoyed it tremendously. Enjoyed it. Like, nice. um, I think it will go down as one of the best films ever made. Uh, no, I do. I do. I, I stand by that. Definitely. Like, I think. I think it will be regarded as one of the best films ever made as time goes mm. on. I think um, if if you look at it like cinematically, um, um, the the it looks amazing. Like everything and it looks great. Like, um, I was thinking like. You, you look at like uh, uh, particularly in the more recent efforts, the MCU stuff. You're starting to see the CGI, or you're like it looks great until like a like a, a key scene, and you're like, oh, actually, um, this isn't as good as a, uh, you know, the, this like a uh, uh, Black Panther stands out in my head straight off the bat, where it, the film looks incredible until the last fight scene, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, this looks like a cut scene from a PS3 game, like mm. it was, um, a, uh, and then you had um. But no, like there was nothing in June that uh, that I at any point thought wasn't there. Um, there was no random uncanny valley effects or anything like that. Um, mm. They did some amazing stuff. Like w- there's a really awesome scene filmed on the the villains that, that I, I don't want to pronounce. They're all they've all got really like incredible like like names and character names and like words and stuff. But like the the, the villain guys who are like Dave Batista's one. And the guy from the Elvis movie is one of them as well. Oh, and yeah. There's a, whole, awesome, there's, a whole scene, there's a whole scene set on their planet that has, like, a black sun. And because it's got a black sun, it's like, that. Like they did this really cool effect where, like, whenever they were in darkness, you could see colour. But whenever they stepped out into the light, because of the black sun, everything just became this sort of, like, black and white movie, almost. Oh. And uh, but it looked really good. And I so I, I did a wee bit of research last night on how they filmed that and whether they just took the color out of the film like like i think if it, most most filmmakers would have just made a black and white they would have you know played around with the filter or something yeah but apparently what they did for uh, june 2 was they filmed it with a um um what's it a uh, what's the the predator vision called ultraviolet is it uh, infrared yeah infrared yeah infrared yeah, infrared, yeah. yeah i think they use, they use like infrared or ultraviolet cameras i can't remember what the, the actual name is but they use some sort of color that so actually what you're seeing is color but it's filmed in a in a color um, a color scale that we can't perceive with human eyes because you know like we can't see that many colors. So it's just like it was just like he. So it's on a it's on a color scale that we can't see. And but so to us it just looks white, like pure white, and it, it's a pretty incredible. Just an amazing film. Hans Zimmer does a great job in the score. Uh, I find the story quite confusing. Very well written, but very confusing. Playing around with it, but the RE teacher me is playing around with it that was quite enjoying the idea that um, there's this like coven. I don't know if anyone, if what any of you guys have seen it, but there's this idea, there's this coven of witches that create that that 
um, they, they take the spy stuff and they can see the future and they've created this like um, messiah mythology and I've fed it to the galaxy and then they're then like they're then doing like a selective breeding program to then ultimately create somebody that will become this messiah and then they can but they can they can have it you know they can have that guy in their pocket because they've created them through the selective breeding program and then it's mm. like there's a lot of shenanigans and plans among plans but basically timothy chamelay's character is the is this messiah guy um but he doesn't believe it and it necessarily doesn't want to be this messiah because he can foresee the death that it would cause if he became this like this sort of jesus like character so it's him playing yeah. around with that it's the, idea, it's the idea that is he the messiah or does the is the mythology just so strong that um people uh his mythology is so strong that people are wanting to him to you know they're looking for him to do things so when he does something they're like oh you're the messiah and all that sort of stuff which is good really good film really enjoyed it um it's, it's long a bit like stacked so i went to the toilet um i actually had the joke with Stu, where like whenever you and me went to the toilet at, um iron claw or or you know, your wife went yeah. to the toilet at Iron Claw, another Von Eric died while Every we were away. Every moment of the movie happened. Yeah. <laughs> um, it did feel a bit like that, whereas I went to the toilet and missed quite a key scene. But I was like, I was at the toilet for two minutes, and it's a two and a half hour, three, almost three hour film. How did I miss a key scene? It's just a film full of key scenes. So, um, no, everyone should go to June. See it on the biggest screen you can. I saw it on a relatively moderate 2d screen and it was amazing uh, it was one of those moments where i was like oh this would look fucking awesome in imax um, mm -hmm. um and i think that 4dx i probably would have been sick <laughs> you're chucking yeah. sand at you for two hours sand it, yeah, yeah. But no, um if you've not seen it you should check it June too i think it would generally think it'll go down as one of the best movies ever made if not it'll be one of the best sci-fi movies ever made um yeah. i think uh, i'm listening to podcasts that are already putting it in Two guys that I listened to called uh, Rage of the Lost Podcast. They did the top 30 sci fi movie podcast last week where it was like they just rated what they thought the best 30 sci fi movies of all time were. And they had June 2 at number 12. It's only been out for two months. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. That's good. I think, um, so yeah. Uh, I'm sure what else I did this week. I, uh, I, I went to two gigs and drank loads of alcohol because it was my birthday last weekend. So, it was great. Drank loads of beer. It was good. 